welcome to episode 12 of my making the HMS Victory. This is the probably the smallest version you can purchase and uh, episode 12 is the finale. I've finished the ship probably 99.9% .9 of the way and uh, I, it turned out I'm very pleased. Now I learned a lot of things along the way. The ship is still in existence. It's a, uh, a British ship and it's currently either being restored or almost completely restored, one of the two. And so as I continued the build, I learned things that I decided to do. I kept the kind of the tan sides and then you'll notice I put some kind of a reddish trim on the, the cannon doors. And then also the bottom of the actual ship is copper. And I was able to do this in copper. Now I would recommend that if you're going to do that, to do it very early in the build, right after you finish the planking. And the hull of my ship, where it's copper, is actual copper. And I used copper leaf, so I'll show you how I did that a little later in the video. I also thought it would be important to age the copper, not have it light as a brand new penny. So I'll also show a little bit on that. I will say that I do think I darkened it a little bit too much. So if you choose to do it, do so a little more sparingly than what I did because I have mine so dark, a lot of it looks like it's wood, but in reality it's, it is copper. If and when I build the ship again, which there's a good chance I will build another one of these, I will make sure that when I do the copper, I do it early on and I will put less of the aging process to it. It's just a little bit too dark in my opinion. And as I finish this ship, I hope you'll join me as I transition from a British warship to a pirate ship. And that won't be just any pirate ship. That'll be the Black Pearl, the greatest pirate ship ever built. I've got the map and I've got the 2021 golden version of the Black Pearl made by ZHL. I hope you'll follow my journey and put together the greatest pirate ship that has ever been. Keep a weather eye on the horizon because you never know when a real pirate might show up. So let me show you some close-ups of the finished HMS victory. If you've watched this video up to this point, you already know whether this was a success or a, a terrible failure. But I'm going to make the bottom of the ship copper. So what I've done is put down a clean piece of paper on my workbench because any of the leftovers I can still use. And speaking of what I'm going to use is copper leaf. Here's the copper sheeting. And you can tell it is very, very fine, very, very fragile. You'll not want any wind blowing in the area that you're working whatsoever. You'll also need a set of some sort of brushes that make special brushes for this. But I just picked up um, makeup brushes and one of the most important ones is this handshake because I can lift up that copper sheet. I think the best bet is to work from the back to the front. That way, when I lay the copper sheets, they'll be layered on top from front to back. Although it shouldn't, you shouldn't see too much seaming. So the first step that I have to do is put some metal leaf adhesive on the ship itself, and then let that dry for somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. It'll uh, dry clear and it'll still be real tacky. Go. It's strange realizing that you all know how this is going to turn out. 
before I even start. Well, my thought is I want to try and make this piece right in this area in general. where there's a spot that I didn't cover, I can come back in with a small piece. Okay, I'm gonna continue on down because I don't want this to get too dry and then I can come up and touch up in the small places. And you can see where there is no glue, it'll just flake right off. Okay, I have the copper installed on this side of the ship and as you already know how it was going to turn out so far it's promising I have a few areas to still work on to uh, brush off a little bit more up in this area you can see some of the dark cracks showing through the beauty of this is and it's going to darken so when it darkens this will not even show so it's nothing that I really have to worry about. I have a few more flakes to uh, just brush off. That's just a little bit time consuming. But as far as my very first ever doing a um, metal leaf, doing a metal leaf project, it shows potential. Not that I would cover every ship in copper but I am going to do some statues and cover them in that gold leaf so this is good practice for that. I'm going to guess that some of you are concerned that this is too bright a copper. Well, that was my concern too. And maybe you recall from previous episodes, I talked about a chemical that will darken and age metals. So that's what I'm going to do next. And this is the product I talked about, Novacan Black Patina. And it's for stained glass windows. Be sure and follow the directions and use in a very well ventilated area. And I'm going to brush it on full strength till I get the color of copper that I want. You probably see it's darkening it already. Now I want it to be a very old looking copper. Kind of like a penny from the 1920s maybe. 30s, 40s, 50s. And once it gets to the darkening that you want, you need to wipe it off. So I've got some rags here and it looks like I won't even get all the way down one side before I need to wipe it off.
think maybe I will go with a wider brush so I can cover more area. Definitely want to wear gloves. Now it has a much older look. Some of the areas that are extra bright, I can just take another fine brush and just work on those areas. And you can see I ran it over here, so I'm going to go ahead and start brushing because I don't want to have those drip look like drip marks. The first pass, it actually makes it a little lighter, and then as you work it, it gets darker. Definitely aged, definitely a better look. So again, this is a learning art, never done it before. And so if I have some modeled areas like in here, I'll work on this and see if I can't rub that out and uh, try some more of the liquid. But you get the idea of what I'm striving for. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. All right, let me set it down and get it finished and I'll show you what it really looks like when I'm completely done. I had trouble locating the correct flag. This is a British flag. It's not the flag that would be uh, on this particular ship. And it actually would have been off of the back of the ship at an angle. So that's a change that I made. Um, I was able to find this variety of flag by ordering about 50 toothpick flags. So I went with the standard British flag, even though it's not really appropriate for this particular ship. I did order a special plaque for it. This is going to be a gift to my sister who was hospitalized for a couple months with COVID. And um, through a lot of prayer from a lot of people, she survived, so I dedicated it to her and the miracle over COVID-19. So that was kind of a nice addition to the ship in addition to the, the stand that came with it. Overall, I'm happy with the uh, sails. Again, this, I used a satin material that has a backing on it that will help it not to fray on the end. I also took uh, this clear gel tacky glue and after I uh, marked the sails to cut them out, I covered the edge with that tacky glue and then wiped it. I did do it from the inside out and then wiped it off with a paper towel. And that glue, that uh, tacky glue, does not discolor the material. And yet it made the edge just a little stiff. And so it will, for sure, it will not fray. Then to get the underside to fold up a little, you can see there is a little thread here. Maybe that's not uh, totally accurate. But at this point right here, on this back side, I would put a little dab of super glue on the thread and then thread the needle through and pull it right to the edge. Now, that one has just a little nub of thread. But now that it's dried, I can come back here and snip this off if I want to. And now it doesn't really even show at all. So that's how I, uh, I got these little bows or the little, um, so it looks like the, the sail has got a little air behind it. So that worked pretty well. I did not follow any instructions as far as the rigging. I just did what I thought looked nice. I had uh, purchased some of these pulleys. They don't come with the kit. You could just use the rope to get the effect because this ship is so small. But I went ahead and added some of those and I think it helps the look to have these. So that's pretty much what it looks like, the completed model. And uh, I did add some more cargo down in here. I put it on both sides and some way down in there. Probably can't see at this angle. I'll put a close-up in. 
So here's my completed HMS Victory scale 1 to 200, which makes it pretty small if you're interested. Total length is about 20 inches, but the actual model itself is about 13 inches. Very happy with how the, the cannons turned out. I'll do even better in the future now that I have my system down. I want to thank all of you that have followed along and those of you that asked questions and those of you that offered support and ideas. It was a great help. Uh, I even have uh, one particular viewer that is in the actual port or lives near the port where this ship actually is docked and is being restored in real life. It's a, uh, a fantastic vessel that thankfully has been saved and is being restored. So although it's not an exact duplicate of the original ship, it was a great learning experience for me. I didn't know anything about the ship itself and uh, I'm thankful that they had information on the website that inspired me to do the little bit of red on the cannon doors which I've mentioned before. But it was a, a, a true adventure that I thoroughly enjoyed. I look forward to doing it again and uh, maybe either get a larger scale or if I get the same one, I'll just take my time a little bit more and not worry about filming and things like that. Learned so many things and uh, I'd like to do the copper again. And I'm still going to check out to see if I can't wipe something to bring the, some of the copper look back. But that's it for now. This is Boiler Dan 1 where my motto is I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. And I'm still learning at age 69, almost 70. Thanks for watching.